Why binary? Wouldn't it be much easier if they just used decimal numbers? Yes, it would. <laughs> This is a fascinating story, and it's one where what we've mentioned already, when you and I started racing around Bletchley Park and talking about Tommy Flowers, he is, if you like, right in the middle of this story. Why binary? Why not decimal? It's caused me to think about it because if you think back to the pre-electronic era, back to Victorian times. Think of Charles Babbage and his famous difference engines. They're, of course, just like the old-fashioned mechanical hand-driven calculators, only a lot bigger. So the question was, can you, on a mechanical gear wheel, grind 10 teeth very accurately? And equal distances apart, so you don't get slippage, you don't get naught slipping into being one. Yeah, so it was a mechanical challenge. So 10 cog teeth doesn't sound like a massive feat to deal with. No, so. it isn't. So but they could do even more. Uh, what I'm trying to say is even earlier than that, they could do more than that. There's been TV programmes on Greek antikytheras that could predict solar eclipses. Absolutely finely machined teeth. So yeah, 10 was pretty straightforward for Babbage, and yet he still had complaints from his gear cutters because they large-scale automation and manufacture wasn't quite there in Babbage's time and he moaned like mad at the invoices, the bills he had to pay to his gear cutters. So that was the big problem in the mechanical era. Things, however, did change enormously when we got not just to the electromechanical era of relays, but when you say, I'm going to be purely electronic, then back in those early days, 30s, 40s, you were talking about thermionic valves. Once again, that's vacuum tubes for those of you in North America who haven't watched the earlier videos. What do you have to say to yourself there? Well, if I use those as a logic element on and off, you've got your cathode which boils off electrons, your anode with a big voltage on it sucking off the electrons up here, and in the middle there's a grid. And by putting what's called, I think, a bias voltage on the grid, if you put a heavy negative voltage on the grid, it repelled the electrons back to the cathode plate and didn't let them through. So you switched it off. So that was how it worked, yeah? Um, but you needed heaters to boil the electrons off the cathode. Heaters, power, these things, valves are so power hungry, it just isn't true. So on the one hand, you are getting this ability to do electronic logic elements, but the power consumption ah, was a, a problem all the time. One reason to use binary overwhelmingly is it's perfect for the logic. But I think the bigger question is when you start counting things, when you start doing the arithmetic, does it still make sense to bust yourself to use decimal because it's what we're used to? Well, yes and no, I think, is the answer to that. The good thing about using decimal, let's say that first of all, is that you need fewer digits, yeah? But binary is a lot longer than decimal. Obvious example, of course, is log to the base 2 of 10 equals 3.322. And if anybody wants to produce a t-shirt with that on, I might even buy one. What it tells you is how much more circuitry and components do you need if you go for a binary computer than if you go for a decimal one. That is just telling us how many more digits we need. Exactly. How many bits would you need to represent 99 in binary? Well, I know that 8 bits is 256. Yes, but that's so too many. So 7 bits it is 128. Exactly. So that would encompass 99, right? Right. So 99 requires 7 bits. So how does that relate to this magic 3.322? Answer. A two-digit decimal number, 2. If you multiply it by 3.322, you end up with 6.6. Four, four. Number file stuff. You round up, you take the ceiling of that, which is the smallest integer directly above it. You times the number of decimal digits by 3.322. That gives you the number of binary digits, but if in doubt you have to round up because you must have a whole number of bits. So straight away you can see therefore that the <laughs> The thing that electronics engineers loved about binary was that it's simpler to build. Now that is so important. 
but they also realized that you would need 3.3 times as much circuitry if you did binary. So there was some argument that said, well, even though binary is right for the logic in a computer, is there anything to be gained by still sticking to decimal for the arithmetic bit, for counting numbers up? not just for doing logic operations. So you could have kind of two areas to consider. One is the actual storage of the numbers and one yeah. is the operation of the computer, yeah. right? Yeah, that's right. And I think the person who really, uh, you know, one's respect for him goes up all the time. Tommy Flowers of Colossus fame was absolutely on top of this. He'd done digital logic for early digital switching experiments in the 1930s. He knew all about this stuff. Two of his engineers who've written up in Jack Copeland's book, Gil Hayward and Harry Fensom, said Tommy was always explaining to us every valve you can save is that much less power, that much less heat to worry about. If we use by Quinn... By what? By Quai, by Quinn, we can save a hundred odd valves. And by Quai or by Quinery, base five, two things. Five is magic for tunny traffic because we're coping with five whole paper tape. That's one good thing about it. The other good thing about it is, you know, from the valve circuits we design, that if you're going to count in, far in binary, you only need two voltages. You can keep them miles apart. That's easy. Five below ground potential, five above, 10 volts span. Nothing's going to make minus five look like plus five, right? But the more we try to pack different levels in, and we have to pack in 10 levels, you know what happens. These voltages drift. You start getting the voltage representing a six drifting a bit, and it looks like a seven. But he said, my studies show that if we just use five voltages, we can keep them stable enough that they don't get confused. So he came up with this idea of biquinary Basically, two things linked in pairs. The left-hand one did zero to four. The right-hand one also did zero to four, but knowing that it was on the right-hand side, actually represented five to nine. And he said, we do that, chaps. We save, I think it was a hundred and something valves, and it's worth it, because you've got to reflect the power consumption of Colossus was six kilowatts. You didn't want to go higher than that. I mean, I can't but draw a comparison here to the data centre video. It's funny that it's kind of come full circle in a way. Yes, absolutely. You no sooner <laughs> overcome the problems and like Steve Ferber's stuff, you know, with the arm chip being low power consumption. Great to do it, but then people just want more of them anyway and you still need a data centre. You still need massive backup power supplies of your own and you need cheap electricity. You could say that the great advantage of, of that is that when you're not in a data center, the low power demands uh, and so on make these things possible. There's no way I want that thing replicated using thermionic valve technology, not even by Tommy Flowers. I do not want third degree burns in my shirt pocket. Thank you very much. <laughs> And much of the material I'm using here, I'll give credit where it's due at long last. This book by Jack Copeland is really good because it's talking about the Colossus era.